9 through 15. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the many blessings that you give. Thank you for allowing me to just be in awe of you when I don't understand certain things. Just knowing that your ways are not my ways and and your thoughts are not my thoughts, but I long for them to be. But I get that you think higher. And I'm grateful for that, that you give us spiritual blessings so that we may understand things deeper. And I am grateful for your word and thank you for um, giving it to us freely. I pray that I may have your spirit with me as I read it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now all the kings west of the Jordan heard about what had happened. These were the kings of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Prezites, Hivites, and Jubasites, who lived in the hill county in the western foothills and along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, as far north as the Lebanon Mountains. These kings quickly combined their armies to fight against Joshua and the Israelites. But when the people of Gibbon heard what had happened to Jericho and A, they resorted to deception to save themselves. They sent ambassadors to Joshua, loading their donkeys with weathered saddlebags and old patched wineskins. They put on ragged clothes and worn out patched sandals, and they took along dry, moldy bread for provisions. When they arrived at the camp of Israel at Gilgal, they told Joshua and the men of Israel, We have come from a distant land to ask you to make a peace treaty with us. The Israelites replied to these Hivites, How do we know you don't live nearby? For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. They replied, We will be your servants. But who are you? Joshua demanded. Where do you come from? They answered, We are from a very distant country. We have heard of the might of the Lord your God and all he did in Egypt. We have also heard what he did to the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, King Sion of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan, who lived in Asheroth. So our leaders and our people instructed us, prepare for a long journey, go meet with the people of Israel, and declare our people to be their servants and ask for peace. This bread was hot from the ovens when we left, but now, as you can see, it is dry and moldy. These wineskins were new when we filled them, but now they are old and cracked, and our clothing and sandals are worn out from our long, hard trip. So the Israelite leaders examined their bread, but they did not consult the Lord. Then Joshua went ahead and signed a peace treaty with them, and the leaders of Israel ratified their agreement with a binding oath. Three days later, the facts came out. These people of Gibeon lived nearby. The Israelites set out at once to investigate and research their towns in three days. The names of these towns were Gibeon, Keprah, Beeroth, and kirath Jerem. But the Israelites did not attack the towns, for the leaders had made a vow to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people of Israel grumbled against their leaders because of the treaty. But the leaders replied, We have sown an oath in the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel. We cannot touch them. We must let them live, for the God would be angry with us if we broke our oath. Let them live? But we will make them Chop the wood and carry the water for the entire community. So the Israelites kept their promise to the Gibeonites. But Joshua called together the Gibeonite leaders and said, Why did you lie to us? Why did you say that you live in a distant land when you live right here among us? May you be cursed. From now on, you will chop wood and carry water for the house of my God. They replied, we did it because we were told that the Lord your God instructed his servant Moses to conquer this entire land and destroy all the people living in it. So we feared for our lives because of you. That is why we have done it. Now we are at your mercy. Do whatever you think is right. Joshua did not allow the people of Israel to kill them. But that day he made the Gibeonites the woodchoppers and water carriers for the people of Israel and for the altar of the Lord 
wherever the Lord would choose to build it. The arrangement continues to this day. Now Adoni Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had captured and completely destroyed A and killed its king, just as he destroyed the city of Jericho and killed its king. He also learned that the Gibeonites had made peace with Israel and were now their allies. He and his people became very afraid when they heard all this because Gibeon was a large city, as large as the royal cities and larger than A. And the Gibeonite men were mighty warriors. So King Adonai Zedek of Jerusalem sent messengers to several other kings, Hoham of Hebron, Piram of Jarmuth, Japhia of Lachish, and Debir of Egalon. Come and help me destroy Gibeon, he urged them, for they have made peace with Joshua and the people of Israel. So these five Amorite kings combined their armies for a united attack. They moved all their troops into place and attacked Gibeon. The men of Gibeon quickly sent messengers to Joshua at Gilgad. Don't abandon your servants now, they pleaded. Come quickly and save us, for all the Amorite kings who live in the hill county have come out against us with their armies. So Joshua and the entire Israelite army left Gilgal and set out to rescue Gibeon. Do not be afraid of them, the king said to Joshua, for I will give you victory over them. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. Joshua traveled all night from Gilgal and took the Amorite armies by surprise. The Lord threw them into a panic, and the Israelites slaughtered them in great numbers at Gibeon. Then the Israelites chased the enemy along the road to Beth Horon and attacked them at Azkath and Makda, killing them along the way. As the Amorites retreated down the road from Beth Haran, the Lord destroyed them with a terrible hailstorm that continued until they reached Azketh. The hail killed more of the enemy than the Israelites killed with the sword. On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon, and the moon over the valley of Elon. So the sun and the moon stood still until the Israelites had defeated their enemies. In this event, not recorded in the book of Jashar, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and it did not set as on a normal day. The Lord fought for Israel that day. Never before or since has there been a day like that one. When the Lord answered such a request from a human being, then Joshua and the Israelite army returned to their camp at Gilgal. During the battle, the five kings escaped and hid in a cave at Mekda. When Joshua heard that they had been found, he issued this command, Cover the opening of the cave with large rocks and place guards at the entrance to keep the kings inside. The rest of you, Continue chasing the enemy and cut them down from the rear. Don't let them get back to their cities, for the Lord your God has given you victory over them. So Joshua and the Israelite army continued to slaughter and wipe out the five armies, except for a tiny remnant that managed to reach their fortified cities. Then the Israelites returned safely to their camp at Mekda. After that, no one dared to speak a word against Israel. Then Joshua said, Remove the rocks covering the opening of the cave and bring the five kings to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon. Joshua told the captains of his army, Come and put your feet on the king's neck. And they did as they were told. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged, Joshua told his men. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord is going to do this to all your enemies. Then Joshua killed each of the five kings and hung them on five trees until evening. As the sun was going down, 
Joshua gave instructions for the bodies of the kings to be taken down from the trees and thrown into the cave where they had been hiding. Then they covered the opening of the cave with a large pile of stones, which remains to this very day. That same day, Joshua completely destroyed the city of Mekda, killing everyone in it, including the king. Not one person in the city was left alive. He killed the king of Mekda as he had killed the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and the Israelites went to Libna and attacked it. There too the Lord gave them the city and its king. They slaughtered everyone in the city and left no survivors. Then Joshua killed the king of Libna just as he killed the king of Jericho from Libna. Joshua and the Israelites went to Lashes and attacked it, and the Lord gave it to them on the second day. Here, too, the entire population was slaughtered just as at Libna. During the attack on Lashes, King Horam of Gezer had arrived with his army to help defend the city. But Joshua's men killed him and destroyed his entire army. Then Joshua and the Israelite army went to Eglon and attacked it. They captured it in one day, and as at Lashes, they completely destroyed everyone in the city. After leaving Eglon, they attacked Hebron, capturing it in all of its surrounding towns. And just as they had done at Eglon, they completely destroyed the entire population. Not one person was left alive. Then they turned back and attacked Deber. They captured the city, its kings, and all of its surrounding villages. And they killed everyone in it, leaving no survivors. They completely destroyed Deber, just as they had destroyed Libna and Hebron. So Joshua conquered the whole region, the kings and people of the hill country, the Negev, the western foothills, and the mountain slopes. He completely destroyed everyone in the land, leaving no survivors, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. Joshua slaughtered them from Kadesh Barneum to Gaza and from Goshen to Gibeon. In a single campaign, Joshua conquered all these kings and their land, for the Lord, the God of Israel, was fighting for his people. Then Joshua and the Israelite army returned to their camp at Gilgal. When King Jobin of Hezron heard what had happened, he sent urgent messages to the following kings, King Joba of Madon, the king of Shimron, the king of Ashaf, all the kings of the northern hill county, the kings in the Jordan Valley, south of Galilee, the kings in the western foothills, the kings of Napador on the west, the kings of Canaan, both east and west, the kings of the Amorites, the kings of the Hittites, the kings of the Pezzarites, the kings in the Jubasite hill county, and the Hivites in the towns on the slopes of Mount Hermon, in the land of Mitzpah. All these kings responded by mobilizing their warriors and uniting to fight against Israel. Their combined armies, along with a vast array of horses and chariots, covered the landscape like the sand on the seashore. They established their camp around the water near Miram to fight against Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. By this time tomorrow, they will all be dead cripple their horses, and burn their chariots. So Joshua and his warriors traveled to the water near Miram and attacked suddenly, and the Lord gave them victory over their enemies. The Israelites chased them as far as Great Sidon and Mishroth Merriam and eastward into the valley of Mitzpah until not one enemy warrior was left alive. Then Joshua crippled the horses and burned all the chariots as the Lord had instructed. Joshua then turned back and captured Hezron and killed its king. 
Hezron had at one time been the capital of the federation of all these kingdoms. The Israelites completely destroyed every living thing in the city. Not a single person was spared. And then Joshua burned the city. Joshua slaughtered all the other kings and their people, completely destroying them just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. However, Joshua did not burn any of the cities built on mounts except Hezron. And the Israelites took all the captured goods and cattle of the ravaged cities for themselves, but they killed all the people. As the Lord had commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua. And Joshua did as he was told, carefully obeying all of the Lord's instructions to Moses. So Joshua conquered the entire region, the hill county, the Negev, the land of Goshen, the western foothills, the Jordan Valley, and the mountains and lowlands of Israel. The Israelite territory now extended all the way from Mount Halak, which leads up to Seir, to Balgad, at the foot of Mount Hermon in the valley of Lebanon. Joshua killed all the kings of those territories, waging war for a long time to accomplish this. No one in this region made peace with the Israelites except the Hivites of Gibeon. All the others were defeated. For the Lord hardened their hearts and caused them to fight the Israelites instead of asking for peace. So they were completely and mercilessly destroyed as the Lord had commanded Moses. During this period, Joshua destroyed all the descendants of Anak who lived in the hill county of Hebron, Debir, Anab, and the entire hill county of Judah and Israel. He killed them all and completely destroyed their towns. Not one was left in all the land of Israel, though some still remained in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. So Joshua took control of the entire land, just as the Lord had instructed Moses. He gave it to the people of Israel as their special possession, dividing the land among the tribes. So the land finally had rest from war. And it was written. He said, scatter the seed. He told us walk by faith and we won't lack a thing. Pray without ceasing.